boxwood bushes growing out back in your yard, don't be surprised if friends come calling asking if they can clip away some trippings to keep and use themselves. The boxwood bush has a small shiny leaf. It grows compactly. It's easily shaped into a low, a low hedge or even a bush. Well preserved, boxwood retains its bright green color, making it a favorite of interior designers. It gives that organic touch and a terrific color contrast to any other palette you have playing out in your home. It's a staple in home displays of catalogs and magazines. Even in Target's home section, it sells boxwood wreaths too. So we asked, should we buy it or try to make it yourself? Tammy Grothy has been investigating that for us. I just called you an investigator, how about that? I love it. I love all of this green that you brought. It's so fresh, it's so bright, it's so summery. So first, give us a sample before we get into how to preserve boxwood. Give us a sample of how we can use it in our home decor. Uh, wreaths really are the staple of boxwood uh, decor. And it always looks great on a door and it looks great at Christmas time around a candle. But I wanted to bring some new ideas that you really haven't thought about before of what you could do with these boxwoods. Um, first of all, this blanket ladder back here. Um, I was thinking, you know, it's sad that we use these blanket ladders during the winter when right. it's freezing, but when it's 100 degrees, what do you do with them? So when you don't need to drape your, your wool blankets yeah. or your cuddle, your cuddle throws, then you can do this. Yes, put on a couple of wreaths, and my goodness, it's the most charming look. Look how cute with just ribbon, the wreath, and a ladder. Done. Done, yep. And then also, if you have an empty frame, which I've got a million, mm -hmm. just layer a wreath on top of it, and you're there. It's all you need to do, and it looks darling. See, I love these ideas because I have a big boxwood wreath that stays on my front door quite a bit. I also use it, though, in between seasons when I don't know what to put on my front door. So Perfect. when it's not on the front door, these are things you can do with it inside Absolutely. the house. Absolutely. Cute. Just how did you mount it on that frame? Um, it's just, it came with a wire, okay. and I just kind of hooked it on the, the little silver thing that holds the... On the little hanger yeah, yep, in the back? Yep, I just Okay, here it. you use an old window, which is clever. Yes, yeah, so, you know, if you're lucky enough to have an old window, it's so fun, but to put some boxwood, even a wreath would look cute, but I thought, even take it a step further and put some, I call these little boxwood pom-poms. <laughs> <laughs> that totally works. And I love it with this stripy ribbon and kind of gives a farmhouse feel. Oh my goodness, I love it too, because these windows usually are neutral colors, which we love. That clear glass, it needs some texture, needs some color on top. Yes, and then I love the look of a chalkboard with a little uh, boxwood wreath. Anytime you can layer a boxwood on top of something else, and even the more you can layer, I think the best, the better it looks. Well, and so. against those neutrals, the blacks, the creams, mm -hmm. the browns, it just pops. They're it literally so jumps in off. Right now. And then check this out up here. I made a. This is actually a little cute. insert that I made for my fireplace, and they're little mini barnwood doors. Uh -huh. And so, I mean, they're cute by themselves, but to layer a boxwood wreath on top of it and a little bottle with some boxwood coming out, and then on top of that, a little tag. I mean, just keep layering it on top of each other, and it just gets cuter and cuter. So anywhere you need a pop of color or that texture, we're always going for. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep, and I also think that the more you group it together, mm -hmm. and it kind of makes a more impact. It's cute by itself, right. but group them together. And you know, if you don't have the right height of one of them, grab a couple of uh, vintage books and tie a ribbon around it and give it the lift it needs, and you can kind of arrange the, the trio the way you want. So just, just by playing with the levels. Playing with the levels. Oh, and check this out, this is so, Wonderful. Milk glass is so beautiful mm -hmm. now. And if you have some, if your grandma has some, go and see if you, she'll give it to you because it's so beautiful. And just sticking a little box of ball on top of it, you kind of have an instant topiary and it looks so pretty with the white. And it's just, it's not uh, affixed at all. It's just setting, yeah, resting on just top. Just resting on top. And I like here that you, you prove here, I think, with this grouping, different shapes, different sizes. They play well together when they're kind of bundled up together. And then another, I mean, speaking of placing on top, but these yeah. are just old little candlesticks. Hold on, can I cheat you out? Oh, totally. I love seeing this. Oh, my little DI tag. A dollar. <laughs> a dollar at the DI. You put that yeah. box on top and you have an elegant candlestick. Yep. And so it kind of makes a little instant look topiary. So I love that look. I think it's adorable. So cute. Yep. Even just using it as a ring, kind of a coaster. Yep. And this is actually meant to hang on behind a chair or something. You could put a candle on it if you're entertaining. It's so cute. Or even hanging from trees at different levels. Adorable. Having that For little box. For a wedding, an outdoor reception oh, or yes. event. It is 
just the way to go. Okay, let's get into the preservation. You tackled this, and I know there are a lot of online tutorials. Did you find those to be successful? Um, yes, I mean, I, I read and read, and they're all basically the same, and it turns out that I don't think it's that, uh, you don't have to be too exact, but the recipe, let me go through some of the ingredients that you need. Yeah, please. Um, the first one, the first time I tried it, I used food coloring because I thought, you know, dye is dye and I don't think it really matters, mm -hmm. but it was a complete fail. Uh -oh. So it didn't uh, soak up the, the color. If you don't use uh, dye, it's going to turn golden, which is pretty. I mean, so some like people, these shades that we see yeah, here, the lighter yeah. tones. And I'll talk about why that turned golden before, but... Um, so then I really dug in. I said, okay, what do I need to do? And you need this absorbent dye, okay. I guess is what it's called. And what's so weird about it is that it's orange and you put it in water and it instantly turns green. I was going to say, I don't want an orange plant. No, and it's super green, like Christmas tree green, but it's beautiful. That's oh, wow. how you get this awesome color. I mean, this is so rich it's and that's so what you want. so rich. So that'll give you the green that you're going yep. for. Yep. So okay. you want to put in a teaspoon of this in some hot water and it kind of, I don't know, makes it, it ready. It does its scientific thing. It does its scientific mm -hmm. thing. Then once you have that, then you add it to two and a half cups of warm water. You've mixed it in the hot water. Yep. And I just use like a little bucket like this. Okay. This boxwood's in some water right so now. So add more warm water to that. Two and a half cups of water. Okay. One cup of glycerin. And I was a little bit scared that I wasn't going to find any glycerin, but I went to Walmart. Oh. And there it was in the pharmacy. Thank you, Walmart. Like by the Band-Aids. So okay. you can buy this glycerin. It's super cheap. What and does this do? Uh, it like soaks it up and I think they put this in like lotions and soaps and okay. it has kind of like a I don't know what it does. Preserves leaves and flowers. Yeah, it says That's it right it on does. there. It's legit. Okay. I'm not making this up. No, I know you're not. Okay, so that goes in there too. <laughs> and then um, I guess people use this for canning. It's <laughs> Clearly you're not a canner. I'm not either. I, I wish I was. Tammy um, and I use this to preserve boxwood. <laughs> so then, okay, how much? So you put one cup of this to the, that. The glycerin. And then a half a teaspoon of citric acid. Okay. Swirl it together and you have your solution. And it's we, ready to go. And we soak the leaves in that? Yep. So what you want to do is you want these to be fresh. You uh -huh. want these to be right. You clip them and it goes right in the solution. Just That's one mistake that I made is I waited way too long and I think these little things kind of seal up. I'm not a botanist and I don't know what happens, but something it, happens. it didn't soak it okay. up. And so that's kind of why mine So just the stems work. go in? You don't need to soak the entire leaf itself? No, nope. okay. it just goes in and a couple weeks later it soaks it up. A couple it, weeks? Yeah. You have to let it sit for a couple of weeks? I know, it's so, yeah, you have to have a lot of patience. So you can actually see the dye. It'll soak it up to the very tip and once it reaches to the tip, um, you're done. And then after that, well, you're almost done. Then you hang it upside down to oh make sure gosh, to all... Oh my gosh, there's more? I know. Yes, can you believe it's such a process? Yes, okay. And so, yes. So you just hang it upside down until it's dry. Uh-huh. And then you're done. And, and then, then we're done. Yep, and then you can take it and you can make all of these things. Is it easy to work with? Is it malleable? Does it move? Um, yes, that's what's so wonderful about it is um, it's kind of flexible once okay. it's preserved. Just like it is, these are fresh, but... Um, if you wanted to make a wreath or something, you just mm -hmm. grab your wire like this and a little wire frame. You can just buy these. And just wrap it around a yep. form. Yep. Okay, now I know most of these actually you purchased, right? The boxwood that you used. Is there any here that you actually use the boxwood you preserved? So this is the only one I made okay. and I didn't bring it because I was proud of it, but um, I bought it because this took me, I mean, the three or four weeks to preserve it, yeah. plus uh, two and a half hours to make it. Oh. And it kind of, I don't know, it's cute, I think maybe. It's fabulous. It's all right, I need to celebrate the time, the investment, <laughs> and the result. I think it's great. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, um, in fact, you should wear this as a crown I on should. your head for completing I the should. task. I should. Okay. I should. I put so much time in it. At the end of the day, would you buy it instead? So, this is my recommendation. Yeah. It is not worth it. it. Is I mean, after you find a boxwood bush, that someone's going to be willing to let you come and whack with your. Right. Or go in the middle of the night and be a thief and right, steal your neighbors. Which I did think of, okay. but, you know, it wasn't until you. Yesterday, I found somebody that gave me these boxwood um, right. uh, from her bush, and so it's it's so that part's hard. And then um, getting it right into the solution, mm -hmm. and it, it's it's hard. It's hard to do, and Which so is why we're going to give this to her as a crown to wear later. <laughs> we're grateful, though. I think to know the process, and then to know at the end of the day, it might just be worth it to to buy it. Where can you purchase it? So I have um, five sources um, from my very favorites to maybe not my, not so much favorite. Okay. Um, first of all, Taipan has a great selection. Mm -hmm. They have great prices.
prices, but you kind of get what you pay for. Okay. Um, their quality is, is okay, and their color is okay, and they have a strict return policy, and I don't know. So it's not my favorite, okay. but um, my favorite is as far as stores go is Target. Really? Yes, if you go when it's on clearance or on sale, which um, is all I do really, but it, they have the, it's a Smith and Hawken brand okay. and they are so green and they last forever. So this is a Target finds? Yes. Really pretty. This wreath right here I've had for over a year and it still is green. These, these leaves are kind of still alive. I Isn't mean, that cool yeah. Consider? So I don't know if they're gonna in ten years they're just gonna be like right. blah. I don't know. But, but Target yeah. did the work for us. So Target we're grateful did the work for us, and they're the prettiest, and they're so fun. Tammy, to shop thank there. you so much. I think we're just inspired by the beautiful greens, and now we know how to use them, where to get them, maybe what not to do in the process. Where can we get more project inspiration from you? Um, I would love it if you came and visit me at our Burlap Bungalow on Instagram. That's where I share all of my fun ideas, and um, and she has plenty of them. A lot of fun creativity happening over there. We'll link you from our website. Thank you so much. Thank you.